What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys one of the best decks or what I think and I feel like a lot of the community thinks is going to be one of the best decks in today's format and that is Eldritch. Now why is Eldritch going to be one of the best decks? Because Skill Drain just came back to three which is insane. It blew my mind when I saw that but I will say that this deck is very very viable and for a trap stun deck it can be kind of fun. Of course with trap decks it's kind of like I'm gonna flip my floodgates and you better have the outs or else I win. Which is why this deck is actually really, really powerful and I'm gonna be competing for one of the top spots in today's meta. But if you guys do enjoy the videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. But one thing I do wanna say is that I love bringing you guys post balance deck profiles. I love bringing you guys deck profiles in general. And so I really hope you guys do enjoy. With that guys, on to the video. So to start things off with this deck, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I hate to say it, but I think this is gonna be one of the best decks in today's format, just because Skill Drain is back at three, and this deck is just so, so powerful, and it's so consistent. So that's why I think Eldritch in general is just gonna be such a problematic deck in today's format. It's gonna be very, very powerful. So of course, we're gonna start off with double Eldritch, the Golden Lord. Now I will say this, if you wanna play triple, play triple. I know some people say, if you play triple, you're bad. I think playing double is better. I, I think it's just less bricky. And I think it also gives you room to play Lord of the Heavenly Prison. So that's why I like to play two, just because you are playing also two Lord of the Heavenly Prison. Now this card is insane in this deck. It's so, so powerful, especially the fact when it's revealed, your opponent can't destroy the set cards you control, aka all your cards are pretty much safe. And then when you summon it, it's pretty much search any trap card in your deck. That's insanely powerful. So that's why I really like to play this card at two. So yeah, two and two, I think this is fine. Also funny enough, they're both level 10. So you can go into the extra deck using these cards as well. Then we are playing triple pot of extravagance. Of course, you're playing a bunch of trap cards. You don't really go into your extra deck that much. So triple pot of extravagance. You know what's funny is I just noticed here that our extra deck is only 14 cards. Listen, I'm gonna say this from now. If you guys wanna play a 15th card, play whatever you want. I'm not gonna tell you what to play. I think these cards are enough. These are all the cards you need. So the 15th card, whatever you guys want to play. I ain't going to hold you. Whatever you guys want to play, do it. All right. So back to the main deck here, like what we we're talking about. We are playing one elixir of black awakening as well. I just wanted to play this card. And actually funny enough, I actually got this inspiration more so from Triff. And the reason for that is because with your elixir of Scarlet Sanguine, and then your Conquistador Golden Land, as well as your Hequero the Golden Land, you really want to be playing as close to the same amount of elixirs as well as golden lands in your deck, if that makes sense. Because if you're only playing your Scarlet as your Eldlixir, it makes it a little bit harder for these golden lands because you can only search your Scarlet. Now, what's really nice is Black Awaiting gives you another target because searching Scarlet on top of Scarlet on top of Scarlet is like, it's good when you need it, but it's also not good because you, your opponent knows what you can and you can't do at that situation. And then it really limits you to what you can do really. So that's why I like playing the one extra Eldlixir because you're playing four to five ratio, if that makes sense. So four Eldlixirs to five Golden Lands. That's why I think these ratios are perfect. And then speaking of Golden Lands, we are playing Triple Conquistador as well as Double Hequero. And actually funny enough, the pop and the banish are really good in today's format. It's, it's really nice that you get these effects as well. So obviously, See, we're playing this for the Eldritch engine. Then for the trap cards, we're just literally maxing out on whatever good trap cards there are in today's format or whatever trap cards can beat today's format essentially, right? So we're playing triple IDP. IDP is insanely powerful in today's format. Triple Torrential Tribute. Torrential Tribute is also insanely powerful in today's format. Literally all the trap cards you guys can see on your screen right now are just insanely, insanely powerful against any deck really in today's format. Even back row decks, if you think about it, because once we get into something like Goes and Match, if you're playing against something like Altergeist, then Goes and Match just breaks Altergeist. It makes it very difficult for them to play. So there's so many, tra like all the trap cards here do something against pretty much every deck. So nothing is gonna be essentially dead for you, right? So that's why we're playing Triple Torrential, Triple Dogmatica Punishment as well. Punishment, of course, we all know how powerful that is, especially with something like Entis, Pop 2, insanely, insanely powerful. We're also playing Triple Infinite Impermanence. Imperm is pretty much the only hand trap in your deck. You don't wanna play other hand traps. You don't wanna play other monsters, but Imperm is really good in the sense of it's good going first, but it's also good going second. It's also a trap card that you can set. And it's also kind of one of those things where it's just in general, especially when you're setting like four or five cards, your opponent doesn't have a lot of zones where they can play around Imperm, if that makes sense. Now, if you set one card, your opponent will know, they'll know, hey, let's not activate my spell card in that zone because if that card ends up being an imperm then i'm just wasting my spell card right because i could just flip the imperm negate something he controls and then i'm negating that column as well the nice thing about this deck is you set four or five cards it's going to be very difficult for your opponent to play around imperm so that's why imperm is really strong because it also catches a lot of people off guard in that sense and they can't play around it unlike with other decks where you set one card they just play around it whereas with this you set four or five cards it's going to be very difficult right so triple imperm triple trap trick of course because every other trap card that i mentioned so far 
can be pretty much searched. Your IDPs, your torrentials, your dogmatica punishments, your imperms, all can be searched off trap Then we're playing triple skill drain. Of course, this card is back at three and this card essentially broke the deck. Like this deck was already pretty good, but skill drain at three broke the deck, to be honest with you. Because now it becomes just caveman Yu-Gi-Oh. You're always gonna have your golden lords. And if you ever need to get rid of cards, Golden Lord does that for you. So Golden Lord not only acts as a beater, but also gets rid of cards your opponent controls and gets rid of cards you control in the sense of like goes and match. Because sometimes you can flip a goes and match, which by the way, we're playing three of, but if you flip a goes and match and you see a situation where you want to summon your Heavenly Prison, but you also want to have your Golden Lord on the board, but if you have a Golden Lord in your graveyard, you can Golden Lord send the goes and match. Because I'm speaking of Gold of Goes and Mash, you could also talk about Rivalry. Now, I'm not playing Rivalry, but if you wanted to, you could also play Rivalry in this deck. Because, again, Rivalry makes it so you can control one type of monsters, which is really good because your Eldritch and your Traps are all zombies, but your Lord is not a zombie, right? But if you have a Rivalry flipped up and you want to summon your Lord, you can just Eldritch from the graveyard and send the Rivalry, right? So I wanted to show you guys that Rivalry is another good option for you guys to play. Another way to play this, actually, to be honest with you, I chose not to, but another way if you wanted to play this is cut Trap Trick to 2, cut IDP to 2, and then play 2 Rivalry. That's another way you want to play it, so you can play 2, two Rivalry, 3 goes in. If you wanted to do that, I just wanted to show you guys another option, but this is a way that I think I'm playing it and I'm having a good time. And then lastly, you are playing Triple Solemn Strike as well. Solemn Strike is really good going first and good going second, so this card's insanely powerful. Especially with like a Skill Drain or a Goza Match, you flip this up, they're going to want to negate it. Skill Drain, if you flip it up, they're going to want to negate it, right? Most of the time, 100% of the time. Why would you let Skill Drain resolve, right? You don't want to let Skill Drain resolve, but what Solemn Strike does for you is it always lets Skill Drain resolve through Monster Negates. Now, if your opponent has Cosmic Cyclone or anything like that, that's on them, right? But I'm just saying like, if they have monster negates and they're going to try to stop your skill drain, you have something like Solemn Strike. Now, for your extra deck, I'm going to talk about it real quick. Extra deck doesn't really matter too much. You don't go into it that much, but we are playing Triple Entest, of course, for punishment. Double Wing Pegasus, as well as one Omega. This is, again, for punishment mostly. You can play Double Zeus. You can play this card i would definitely play your gustav max because a lot of the time you can do enough damage where your opponent's just low on life points and then you can like overlay double golden lord or overlay a golden lord plus a lord and then uh, i guess they're both lords but you can overlay a golden lord plus a heavenly prison i should say and then make this and, uh, and beat them from that so you can burn them with this you can play pleiades because all your trap cards are actually level five monsters so you guys can play pleiades as well now that i think about it because you're playing punishment you could also play something like fear Jeet to help you fix your hand but this deck is also so consistent so whatever if you, if you whatever your 15th card is you guys can play as your 15th card i didn't even notice i only had 14 here i thought i had 15 but yeah you guys can play fairy jeet you guys can play just any other you know relatively good dogmatic a punishment target whatever you guys want to play but that's it for the deck i think this deck is very very good i think this could literally be one of the best decks in today's format if not the best deck this and brave are going to be very very interesting in today's format because this format is going to be really split combo and back row because just because skill drain came back it's it's going to be like a, not a combo format it's not going to be a back row format it's going to be literally a 50 50 right because skill drain makes so many trap decks playable but the brave engine makes so many combo decks playable because brave especially most of the time will protect you against stuff like nibiru and so uh yeah pk is also really good uh, this, this, this format's going to be fun but i think this deck for today's format is going to be one of the best decks for sure and i think you guys should try it out so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy yes Uglitch is just a bunch of purple cards. Or, I always used to call them pink. People say purple, I don't really know. But a bunch of trap cards, and that's what this deck really is, but I think it's very viable, it's very competitive. And it doesn't lose to a lot of things, to be honest with you. But that's why this deck is very, very powerful, and uh, for what it is, really, it's going to be one of the best decks, if not the best deck of today's format. So thank you guys all for watching, I hope you guys did enjoy it. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and with that, thank you signing out. Peace.